Aiken looked impressive in, in beating Aiken and Sunderland that beat un previously undefeated and number one ranked Tory Jackson with 150. And that Sunderland match against uh, against Terry Steiner tonight ought to be a thriller too. There's Keith Poolman, uh, former National Division II National Championship for Northern Iowa, the referee tonight. And the captains of these two teams are coming out. There are three captains, the seniors for the Nittany Lions and the Brands twins who are seniors for the University of Iowa. What they're flipping for there is to see who gets the choice in the first match at the second period mark to decide who gets a, to go up, who makes the decision on who will go in the upper or down position, or decide to let the other fellow decide. So when we get to it, you'll see. There is Chad Zapital, ranked first this year at 118 pounds. He beat Eric Aiken of Iowa State, who was ranked two at the time, to solidify that. And here is Sean Nelson. Now, Sean is ranked eighth at 118, but last match, he beat Eric Aiken of Iowa State impressively at Ames. And he has the capability of giving Chad Zapital a tough match. So let's see what happens here at 118 pounds. And before a huge, very big crowd, eight or 9,000 people at least here at Iowa's Carver Hawkeye Arena. And in immediately goes Sean Nelson. Well, Nelson did what he needed to do against Zapital. You don't want Zapital on top of your head. Oh, and he uh, doubled up Zapital. He got almost doubled him up with that over that uh, wizard. He, he made the attack first there as he dropped into the single leg, which set up him coming out, working the head, coming around, doubled up, and came around for the two points. And so Nelson went on the attack against Zapital, and it worked for him for two to nothing lead. Sean Nelson. Right here, he has got that double up there, and basically Zapital bailed out there and gave the two points. Sean Nelson, talented young man from North Royalton, Ohio. And he's riding Chad Zapital. If, if Zapital is weaker in any one area, it's probably in this position on the bottom. And Nelson is riding him now. Well, Nelson looks like he knows what he's doing on top there. Looks like he has a feel on top for his leverage and his weight. It's very important when you're on top that you know how to make yourself a lot heavier than you actually are. And look at that pressure he's putting on Zapital, actually flattening him out, keeping the pressure up low, high, keeping the hips down flat. Nice job of riding by Sean Nelson from Penn State. We've used about uh, a minute of the second of the first period here at 118 pounds. Now Zapital's on his feet. You know, Penn State probably feels like they have Zapital's number as far as when they're on top because last year Prescott, who was down at 118 and the national champion, turned uh, Zapital at will, beating him 14 to nothing once and scoring at least 18 points, I think, in their first match. And this is an area that Zapital needs to improve on coming out, get his hips out, coming up laterally, coming up tough and explosively. And Penn State wrestler Sean Nelson doing a nice job of riding here. This is Sean Nelson's lost only once this year. He lost early in December to a wrestler from Drexel. And he's just hanging on, so staying in there against uh, Zapital with a tough ride on top. We're down to the minute mark. One minute left in the first period. I think if there's a way you're going to get to Iowa, it's going to ride them hard. And Penn State's coaches believe in, in, in teaching all uh, aspects of wrestling. They do a nice job of it. And this is the way you're going to get to Iowa wrestlers or to any top-notch wrestler by being able to work hard and ride on top. In fact, I've seen Dan Gable work harder in the last few years on this with Iowa, and they've improved on top. If you're going to be a complete wrestler, you have to be able to ride and work on top but as a matter of fact, you have, in this situation, you have to take the man down before you can ride it that's in the right. first period. And that's what Sean Nelson did. So Chad Zapital has now been ridden for two minutes and 18 seconds. There's Dan Gable, frustrated at uh, with Royce Alger and Jim Zaleski next there, frustrated at Chad Zapital's inability to get out here in the first period. 23 seconds to go. Two to nothing is the score. What Nelson has done a nice job of here is covering Zapital's hips so that Zapital's making one move but not putting a, uh, putting them together, not being explosive after his first move. In fact, that wasn't all that explosive. 
Nelson did a nice job. He rode the entire period. He has two minutes and 40 seconds of riding time after an early takedown and an impressive start by Sean Nelson. The choice was Nelson. As we talked the about it position. before, when you can ride, you can gain an extra point. Coach Gable talking about it right there, knowing that Zappital has to be able to get out to win. You can gain that point, but psychologically, you beat down your opponent, and physically, you beat down your opponent. And Nelson's out, having lost only six seconds of riding time, so he has 234 up on the board in his favor. If, you, if a wrestler, as you know, at the end of a match, has a minute riding time more than his opponent, he gets an extra point tacked onto his score. From Iowa's point of view here, Zapital need this is a very important series, a very important one minute right here or so, because he needs to get in and get a takedown. This is a very important uh, position for Chad Zapital. Needs to be on the attack right here and look for that opportunity to score. You don't want Penn State, if you're Iowa, to score again right here and make the score five to nothing, plus the one point riding time that's sitting there for him. Well, it's an upset in the making, although, as I say, I saw Chad Nelson defeat Eric Aiken 9-3. Yeah, and Sean Nelson. And, and, uh, Sean Nelson, I should say, and, uh, and do it rather handily, although the Iowa State team looked a little tired. Nevertheless, Nelson looked in that match the way he looks here, just solid and stable, and we'll see how Zappital does as the match goes on, trailing now 2-1. to one. You know, one thing Nelson has a little bit of size here, and a little speculation. Obviously, it would it would appear that Nelson would be going up to 126 when Prescott comes to one down to 118, and he has the size to get in there and go at 126 too. I think. Zappital, collar and arm tie up. He's trying to set up for a shot that he would put him back in the lead here. He's now trailing. Three to one, the score on the board is three to one. And I'm trying to figure where that extra point came from. Because we have a two to one. It's Take three to zero. That's, it's wrong up oh, there. Yes, all right, all right, that's right. It was a, uh, Nelson's escape made it three to nothing. There, there's Zappital. You see, it was a little bit too little, too late right there, and, and Zapital needed to have been going like that because Sean Nelson hasn't really been doing a lot. There you go. Right here, he works ahead. Now, snap, and he gets that front head lock a little far knee, drives it for the cradle, but the clock and the horn rang. Now, you notice, here comes Nelson into the leg, that it was Zapital's choice, and he didn't want to go under Nelson, so he started on the feet here. And he let Zapital get in on him right there. I mean, he let Nelson get in on him. That was his first mistake of this third period. There, he's able to hip out. Now, the action has to be taken from Iowa's point of view here. Zapital needs to be changing his level, working ahead, getting in any way he can go and put the pressure on. Nelson hasn't been doing all that much. He's, four. Actually, he's actually four points behind because that, that riding time point is a lock. He can't That's lose right. it. So, and it's actually four to nothing, even though the scoreboard says three to zero because of that extra point that will be giving to, given to Nelson at the end of the match for his one minute plus riding time. He has two minutes and 34 seconds, and it's Nelson making the shot. Well, it can be taken away, Doug, if uh, Zapital hits a, where, oh, two minutes, you're right, yeah. you're right. Yeah. Back in the center, neither man has been warned here for any inactivity yet, so there's not any point potentially sitting out there as a penalty. We're in the last 45 seconds. Zaffital has not been able to reach Nelson. Nelson has been making good moves now this, and defending himself yeah, This well. is where Zaffital can produce right here. He can execute, but right now Nelson's stalling. He's hanging on to the elbow. He knows what that he uh, can afford to get a stalling call, and he is absolutely not doing any wrestling right now. And it actually, with, with the referee not calling him, a smart wrestling. There's the warning. He does warn There's him. There's the takedown. First takedown. You got a warning, right? 
Here we go. He's gonna, you know, here's the takedown right here, and there's some strategy coming up that Zapato's gonna have to decide. Right there, pushes in, drives across the opposite leg, comes up with the two points, but I, if I was Zapato, he's got a decision right here. He might just decide to uh, push him away and go for it. He does. He does, and now. Four to two with the riding time for Nelson. 10 seconds to go. It's actually five to two. It's gonna have to be a, a move to the back. It was just too little too late for Zapital. Nelson is the winner for Penn State over Zapital. As a nice victory for the visiting Sean Nelson at 118 over Chad Zapital. Two minutes and 30 seconds of riding time. And Penn State takes the lead over the Iowa Hawkeyes three to nothing. And I'll tell you, that's the first time this year that Iowa has been behind in a dual meet because Zapital was previously undefeated in a dual meet. And you know what I see in Sean Nelson a little bit? He's a very determined wrestler. He's probably saying, I want to be at 118. Yeah. <laughs> there may be some, uh, well, let's go. there's been some good Here. matches in the room yet. Here's the one people came for. Yep. This is Jeff Prescott, who, uh, 118-pound national champion, an outstanding wrestler in the NCAAs last year against Terry Brands of Iowa, a national champion two years ago. They're at 126. Prescott will probably go back to 118 after this match, but he wants to wrestle Terry Brands first. Now these, are, as we said, Rich Lorenzo called these two men pit bulls. They wrestled each other in the Virginia duels. Tim and I were there a couple of years ago, and these men were both disqualified for fighting, and we have to admit, when they got rough with each other, off the mat, here is Prescott in on the leg against Brands. I think what you're gonna see as a viewer here, you're gonna see two wrestlers that are always trying to score. Both Brands and Prescott are always trying to score. They're trying to throw you to your back. They're trying to put a little pain into you. They're not very, you know, I tell you, the, the wrestler who is most patient in this match may be the one that's most successful. Neither one of them is afraid of man or beast, and they are goers all the time. Two extremely strong individuals in Brands, Terry Brands and Jeff Prescott. They both love to compete. Good stuff. Good stuff. Good On the edge. It's just what a lot of fans come to watch. I mean, if every match like this was a wrestling match, we wouldn't have any problem putting 15,000 in here and 9,000 where there are 9,000 seat arenas, wherever the arenas, whatever they hold. They oh, Brands came right up behind, and he has the takedown. Two to nothing in favor of Brands. Concentration there. There's Mike. Bonnie Brands, mother of Terry Brands, very uh, excited right there. And if Terry Brands, if that was a close call at first, he proved the go. takedown then as he stayed behind the arms and finally brought Jeff Prescott down to the mat. 2 0. That was a little bit of a surprise, actually, the way it happened because it was this uh, Jeff got a, his back away from him and forgot where he was. Prescott is out, it's 2 to 1. Brands, Terry Brands of Iowa. Oh, oh nice oh, job. Oh, oh, double. Oh, that oh, underhook oh, came across to that, made it a double leg takedown. Oh, Terry Brands made it four to one. Prescott is. See, he's just posted post there under the post. Of shucks come across the opposite leg, drives into the double, and now finishes it off by hanging on to those ankles right there. Two points takedown. Now, Jeff Prescott is complaining about a sore ankle. He's a tough guy, and I, and if, and I suspect if he's limping it, it's because it really hurts. Yeah. And he's not going to let you know. Uh, it looked to me as if maybe Terry Brand stepped on his foot as he was taking him back. If we were to see that again, I think that's what we might see. But here is Brands with two takedowns leading. These are both national champions. It's four to one with a minute left in the first period of Penn State. And Penn State has the lead here three to nothing on Sean Nelson's win at 118. Not very many people, if anybody, ever uh, rides out Prescott. He's very good underneath. He just came out for the one again. But four two. Terry Brands has come to this match ready to wrestle, and you needed to be it when you're against another national champion. Prescott's coming off a big victory by their own 118-pounder, Sean Nelson. Right here. Now, here we come across. I don't see any. No. Okay, he. That was on the other. 
Yeah, situation. I was looking for whether they stepped on the foot or not, and I no, couldn't see. No, I was in the double leg takedown when they were going out of bounds. In the center. It was a uh, just a little accidental situation. It looked like it might have caused a twist, but they're not showing any problems now. Here is a warning against Prescott for wrestling when he's back to the mat, or back to the edge. A little surprise there. Four to two is the score in favor of Terry Brands, and here he comes. Well, you know, we've seen this happen before. When Terry Brands gets on a roll, it might be against uh, Kendall, uh, or uh, Kendall Tom Cross, against Kendall remember. Cross. Was it both of them? They both had their their uh, meets with Kendall Cross, I think. I, I think you're right. But I think it was probably, I think that was Tom Brands a couple years ago, but it's six to two at the end of the first period. And uh, there's Tom Hughes. Brands, first period. And there's Father first. Brands, Tom Brands, excited. There you go, guys. Second period. Right here. Back. The choice that time went to Brands, and he's going to go neutral. Well, I can understand why after the success he had in the first period. When you go, when you have something going, you just get after him. Not only do you know that you can make it work, but your opponent is psychologically now a little bit destroyed, knowing that three times in a row he's been Look taken down. Look and he looks, he, you know, he looks stronger. He looks stronger than uh, Prescott tonight. Center, okay? He does make Prescott look like he needs to go down to 118, you know, with the way he's wrestling right now. Prescott is a very strong young man, but I don't think he's as strong as Terry Brand. And again, he comes around. He's just been quicker on the draw, and that's the fourth takedown for Terry Brands. He's up 8-2. to two. See what I like about both these wrestlers, and tonight it happens to be that Terry Brands has got the chance the most, is they, they go for the fall. And he is going for the fall. Did he get an air fall? Oh, yeah, he got two at least. He did. Ten to two. Ten to two in favor of Terry Brands and against Jeff Prescott. See, and, and it doesn't matter whether you're getting pushed or not. You have to know how to wrestle in the middle of the mat. Right now, Terry Brands is making Prescott look terrible. He's pushing him on the side. He's got two. able to hook through and come out of there and not and avoid the fall. But it's 12 to 3 here with 46 seconds to go in only the second period and Terry Brands is really turning it on Jeff Prescott. It's like a payback for Zappadol. Well, I'm, you know, and Prescott's this type of wrestler. He, you know, he puts a lot of pain into the people that he wrestles and right now the tables are being turned on him right now. Break it, guy. Lorenzo's going to say all he's doing is pushing, but you know, there's not a lot of argument right now because besides the pushing, he's executing. You know, that's let's listen. Penalty. Let's listen. You didn't call it that way in the first match. What do you expect? We've got two national champs. He takes a shot, he counters, he shoots, pushes him out of bounds. Where is that stalling? No. When you, I tell him to circle in, he has to try to get it. A warning right here. Difference of opinion. Now, there, now the warning by Pullman is okay, because guys, he says that Rich Lorenzo is questioning his well. Judgment. Yeah, Rich went back to him and said, "No, you're wrong." Brad. And there is Brands putting Prescott on his back. This thing, this, this is unbelievable. I shouldn't say that because it's Terry Brands, and we've seen it before. to five going into the third period you know the one thing that's different um, right here is that even being pushed Go ahead. Go Prescott's ahead. not even getting a chance to make a shot right here to the back four point move no. uh, 18 to five well there's yeah they deferred Iowa had it his dad's <laughs> reaction. It's just hard to believe how these matches could turn. I wouldn't have expected, uh, even knowing how good Terry Brands is, that Prescott is a weight above his best weight, that 
somebody with Prescott's ability and mainly his temperament would suddenly be going into the third period trailing 18 okay, to 5. Well, let me Terry tell you, it's really been tough. Yeah, I think Terry Brands is on his way to the same kind of dominance he's always had at 126. And uh, this is just going to fuel the fire for Jeff Prescott. He's that kind of competitor. You're going to see him uh, doing this kind of thing to a lot of people yet this year. Probably at 118, though. So Prescott had his choice, and he started on top. He wants to try to turn Brands. This well, is the only you know, chance that's, he's got. Yeah, well, and it's a pretty good chance. Not Maybe not against Terry Brands. We'll, we're going to see right here. But Prescott's one of the best I've seen in being able to tilt and get a run going himself. Man, he gets going with those tilts. You, you know, there's no stopping it. But right here, I don't know whether Terry Brands will even let him get going. And he's not going to, I don't think. A minute and 20 seconds of riding time for Brands, too, at this point. A minute 15 to go in the match, and Terry Brands leads Prescott 18 to 5. Here we go. You're watching Iowa Public Television's College Wrestling Series. This is number one ranked Let's Iowa go. against number three Penn State. Actually, they'll be number two the next time the rankings come out after having beaten Iowa State, which is currently number two. Brands. So you can see how tough Prescott is on top by being able to ride this long on Terry Brands. Now you see, there's the, uh, see, he was able to get the, uh, the hand right there. He controlled the hand, and he was out. That's what you have to do. No riding time now because it's less than a minute, but just barely less than a minute. Brands, with a lot of strength, is managing to keep Prescott out of bounds. In fact, by his, uh, his power, his ability to keep him on the edge, he's actually led to those stalling uh, calls. 40 seconds to go. Yeah, Scott's not coming in. The ref could end the match right now. It'd be too bad if he had to. Yeah, that's a good call. He called it, and that's going to be a technical call at the end of the match. Boy, can you believe it? A technical call by Terry Brands over last year's 118-pound national champion. Puts Iowa ahead of Penn State by the three. I'll tell you, TJ, it's uh, you get it going one way in the first match that you didn't expect. Maybe Sean Nelson beats Chad Zappel, number one ranked, and then boom, it turns in a hurry. Uh, it certainly does. And, uh, 9,000 uh, fans here at Carver Hawkeye doesn't hurt that momentum any for the Iowa Hawkeye. Here's Bob Truby of Penn State against Tom Brands of Iowa. Truby's ranked number three undefeated. He had a draw against Mike Moreno of uh, Iowa State. Generally, by the way, uh, 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 not a very impressive draw. Neither man did much in the match. Brands is very aggressive. He's had some good matches in the past with Truby, who is a strong defensive wrestler. His shortcoming is that he's not really aggressive on his feet. Wait a second, guys, in the center here. If we're gonna hit the head, set it up, let's go for it, okay? And sometimes he gets into closer matches than his coaches would like. There's a shot by Tom Brands who likes to penetrate. He likes to get in on those singles and doubles. Bob Truby. He's a senior from Washington. Well, the reason the fans are going here is because Truby does, isn't doing anything. I mean, he's just hitting the head there, but he hasn't taken one shot yet. He's just dancing. You know, the ref really has to be on his toes in Carver Hawkeye, and, uh, and place like Penn State, too, because these are very, very knowledgeable fans. They anticipate. They know what's coming. They know right now that Bob Truby is stalling, and you're going to hear it. And the thing is, they're right right now. He has not taken one forward shot. Yes. Ruby against Brands. That's a warning. There's the warning. That has to be frustrating for the coaches from Penn State right now because, uh, you know, the object there is to uh, to go forward. 
We've used a minute and 46 seconds of the three-minute first you're period. Not, you're not taking any shots. Okay? Iowa and Penn Innocent. State. Iowa five, Penn State three after two matches. Now Brands has managed to get hold of one arm. And here he comes in for a double leg. Single. Truby, who's uh, physically strong, has gone over the back. And Brands is going to have to turn the corner here to prevent a stalemate. Out of bounds, neutral, guys. There we go. There's Rich Lorenzo, the coach of Penn State. Remember, in the center. Assistant John Fritz behind him. We'll talk to Coach Rich Lorenzo after the 150-pound match here on Iowa Public Television. Rands in the Iowa black on the right. Penn State has a white stripe around the middle. People have been watching wrestling for years or quite familiar with that uniform. And some of the great wrestlers that Penn State has had. They get nice recruits. They recruit a quality young man. Bob Truby, the four-time state champion, is kind of unique. He won two of his titles in Maryland and two of his titles in Pennsylvania. Truby with a front headlock. But he's going to have to do something with it. Use it. You hear Keith Coleman say, use it. There's the end of the first period. No score. Well, you can see him keeping it close anyway. Yeah, and you can see that... Uh, Penn State has that. really kept it close with Iowa in the Look last uh, series. They won three in a row, then they lost three in a row, and then last year they there tied in their second meeting. You can't get much closer than that. Penn State, the pride of the East in wrestling against Iowa. Won many, many national champions now, championships now. Here is Tom Brands in the up position. Truby had his choice and picked down. Now he has to get away from last year's national champion. And you can't get away flat on your belly. Tom Brands, one of the twins from Sheldon, Iowa, a small town in northwest Iowa. You know, Penn State and Iowa is a lot alike. They get wrestlers on the team that in high school were competing against each other, and then they come together. Penn State draws from all over the state in the east, and they get the top wrestlers. In fact, Truby wrestled Prescott in the in the Pittsburgh Newsboy Classic, uh, Pits, you know, Pennsylvania against the world, and beat Prescott in that meet. Prescott, of course, not being from Pennsylvania. Brands being from New York. Has almost a minute of riding time Go now. He's, coming, he's really working hard. Now, remember, Truby was warned once, so he has to stay active. No. He's been unable to get a base. He has not been able to get a base. Yeah, something he hasn't I been able to do I yet this match is be active. There's a penalty. There's the first point of the match. <laughs> Truby is called for what Keith Pullman says is inactivity on the bottom. Work it, top man. I'll tell you, Brands, Work it. He went out to the side. He was going to try to turn him. Use your head. Truby's quite strong. Got to get him back. Physically. Fritz Lorenzo calls him the strongest man on the team. Well, he, he probably is. He is very strong, and I'm sure he has lots of skills. He just needs to be more aggressive out there to um, be able to go with somebody like Tom Brands. And I think to be able to get in the top four or five in the nation, he is going to have to use his, uh, be a lot more aggressive than he is tonight. The last two seconds, and the period ends. A one to nothing score and a penalty point. Tom Brands leads. And Brands goes to the bottom position. First move, Bob. First He's move. Get control. About 20 away from uh, Barry Davis's record. And he jumped into second place this weekend with a couple of victories. He's undefeated this year in 22 matches. He's able to really get the hips nice arch, get the hips out, turn around. No takedown yet. Takedown. There it is. It's now four to nothing. That's an insurmountable lead, I think, right now. For uh, unless. Uh, well, and Brands is quite confident here. He's four to one with the escape. And, and Truby, he, he wasn't paying attention right there. Brands let him go completely, faced him. Truby stayed on the mat, got taken down again. Loss of concentration. Come on, guys. Hey, Bob. Hey, he needs to go. Hey. 
A minute and 11 seconds to go in the third, in the third period. It's five to three in favor of Tom Brands over Truby. Now these these men have met before several times, I believe. Are you scoring? Tom Brands is doing a really nice job of being right. patient here, Doug, because with, uh, when you wrestle somebody that is as defensive as Bob Truby, you can lose your patience. He has got a straight ahead style, Tom Brands has. He has been workmanlike and really doing a nice job patiently working and getting the points. Keeping the pressure on. Look at that. Head down, head down, in and out. And there's another penalty. Against Truby, and it's 7-2. to two. There he is on a single. A right, little low height cross there. Went off for a double. Two points. Nine to two. With 25 seconds to go. Trying to pull Truby over for back points. He does have more than two and a half minutes. Of, about two and a half minutes. He's going to get time. a major decision here. Is what he's going to get by riding him out. Beat somebody by eight points or more, and you had another. Major decision point to your team. And Brands is the 10 to 2 winner with riding time. The second Hawkeye win in a row. And now it's 9 for the Hawkeyes and 3 for the Nittany Lions. Tom Brands, a two time national champion, will be going for his third championship this year. His coach Dan Gable congratulates him after that victory. 10 to 2 over third rank. Bob Truby, who was previously undefeated this year, but no longer. In fact, the Lions.